If I don't get the third transplant, I'm going to die. That's just the truth, and I have to face that. But I also get to think about my legacy then, and I hope that my legacy is one of perseverance. I hope people look at what I've been through and, and realize that they can get through anything. I feel like in my life I've always felt a little isolated because I grew up with cystic fibrosis, so that alone really made me feel very different than a lot of the people around me. When I started to recognize my sexuality, I felt even more driven away because I grew up in the Midwest and I was in a very small town and not to say that they weren't accepting of people, but I certainly didn't feel comfortable being 100% who I was. I, I think it took uh, moving to Los Angeles and facing death multiple times for me to say, you know, I can't live my life, you know, fearing who I am. I think someone who really helped me identify who I was, ironically, is my ex-girlfriend. Over the course of that relationship, I started to identify the things that I wanted in my life and the things that I didn't. It made me realize that I wasn't happy and she wasn't happy. And the reason why I wasn't happy was because I wasn't who I, who I should be. And that led me to my husband, who is another person who helped me become everything that I am today. And the reason why I'm here and, and being so open about it is because he's encouraged me. It was June 7th, 2016. Um, I saw this pretty guy on Instagram uh, and I sent him a message. We ended up just chatting over the course of a year and uh, it was May 27th, 2017. We went on our first date. And I remember I had just been told that my chronic rejection of my first double lung transplant was getting much, much worse very quickly. I was just like, you know what? I'm not gonna shy away from any of this. I'm just gonna tell him flat out everything on the first date in a matter of 30 minutes and see what he says. So we sit down and I just say, you know, hi, nice to meet you finally. You know, I'm in chronic rejection of my double lung transplant. I don't know how much time I have left. You know, I don't even know if I'm gonna get a second transplant. You know, life is great, but I'm dying. And he's just like, okay, okay. Like this is a lot to take on. And then I drove him home and I was hoping, you know, we'd hang out a little bit more. And uh, he just pats me on the back and goes, thanks man, and gets out of the car. And I was like, what, what just happened? September 1st, I went to the ER at UCLA with my mom. Both of my lungs had collapsed. Um, my mom asked me to post something on Instagram because I hadn't really told anyone what was happening because I didn't want people to worry. But we were in a life and death situation and my mom didn't want to have the responsibility to have to tell everyone that I died if that's what ends up happening that night. My husband now, uh, he comments and likes the post. Irritates me because <laughs> I was friend zoned by this person. About an hour later, I get a text from him and he says, where are you? At that point, I'm infuriated because I'm like, he already liked the photo, he knows where I am, so I just respond. And I'm like, you know where I am. You liked the photo and you commented on it. And he said, no, I'm here at the ER. Where are you? And then every single night that I waited for that transplant from September 1st to October 3rd, he was there. And when I had the transplant, he waited with my family for 14 hours for me to come out of surgery. And after I got out of the hospital, after I had the second transplant, he didn't leave. And that was new to me. I was used to people coming into my life and then bailing. Um, but he didn't, he stayed. Coming out on the CW was uh, an absolute accident. We had a plan to tell a story. In that story, it did not include me coming out on camera. That was the first time I've ever said on camera that I'm gay. So that was very, that was a big moment. I just couldn't help it. Like when somebody that supportive of you, who loves you that much, is looking at you, you have to just say it, you have to scream. You know, they say you want to go to the mountaintop and scream that you're in love. That was that moment for me. Last year, we decided to get married because, you know, we love each other and we've both been through quite a lot and we know 
life and how short it can be and unexpected. Life is amazing. I mean, he's going through this rejection with me again, and he's gonna be right by my side all the way up until that third transplant or until the end. You know, there's films out there that romanticize illness, but it's not romantic. You know, what I go through, what I face every day, and what he faces, and what my mom faces, it's not romantic. It's heartbreaking, it's sad, and it's isolating. Because I have a lot of feeling about what's happening to me, because it's happening to me, that I can't share, because I don't want to scare them. And then they have the same, because they're going through their own experience, and they don't want to share that with me, because they don't want me to worry, because I have enough to worry about, I'm dying. I hope that, you know, the same way that Hollywood needs to step up and start hiring LGBTQ talent to play those roles in those films and TV shows, they need to step up and hire people to write and to act with people who are disabled and chronically ill because you'll find that the stories are still entertaining. I mean, my show, when I was on my last days, that episode had amazing ratings. It's entertaining, but it's real and it's not romantic. I hope that somehow my story inspires people to um, embrace every aspect of themselves. Sometimes it's scary to look in the mirror and to see something that you don't want to see. And I deal with that every day. You know, I know that what's happening inside my body with the chronic organ rejection of my second transplant is killing me. But I have to embrace that. I have to keep moving forward, and I hope that that's what my story does for people. I hope that, you know, it inspires people to push through those moments when they feel like they can't. When you're sitting at home and you're watching videos like this, and you hear people like me look at the camera and say, it gets better, know that it's not just me saying something. It may be hard right now, and you may not want to continue fighting through whatever it is that you're going through. But I promise you, take it from someone who faces death every day with my condition, it gets better. Life is too precious and too random for things not to happen the way that they're meant to happen. You just have to have faith in the universe, trust the path that you're on, and know that the phrase, it gets better, truly means it gets better.